morning to all of you. Thank you so much for being here. It's Friday morning. You could have been otherwise minded, but you have chosen to stay with us this morning to engage in discussions. I'm here to have a conversation about learning. And why am I having a conversation about learning? Learning is, in fact, important in every training and educational institution. I'm also here to talk about professional development. Why am I talking about learning with professional development? Because professional development would not have been successful if there isn't learning. But today I want to, for a moment, take you into theory. I'm here to present to you learning in a theory that is called situated learning. It's a theory that some of you have heard about. I don't know if you've ever thought about situating TVET learning in that particular theory. I don't know if you've ever thought about situating TVET professional development of teachers in that particular theory. And so I would like us to have a conversation about learning in practice. Now, a couple of days ago, as I started to think about what I'm gonna be sharing with you today, several things happened to me that caused me to realize that this presentation or this discussion is very, very important. A couple of days ago, I was in Panama and I was in the hotel and I was trying to tell the bartender, or I'm not gonna say bartender, you're gonna think I'm at the bar. The, so I'm going, I'm going to say the, the waiter. And I was trying to tell him that I wanted to have still water, not sparkling water. Now, I've spent five years studying Spanish in high school. As a matter of fact, I think I got a, a one or something like that, Spanish and French. And I had such a problem telling him that I wanted sparkling water. He spoke no English. And so I find myself picking up the glass and saying, agua, agua, still, still, as if to say, as if, you know, when you say it louder or slower in English, they're going to understand it. It caused me to reflect a little bit, and I said, after five years of doing Spanish and getting them big grades there in CXC, have I learned Spanish? And then I'm hearing no over there. Why haven't I learned Spanish? Because I'm not able to practice it. And, 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 and obviously the way I learned it had an impact on the, 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 my, my understanding of it. And then this morning as I was driving here amidst the taxi drivers coming left, right, and center, and I went out there and I gave me a nice little place to park and a park, I said, you know what? I think I'm a good driver, you know, I'm not doing so bad at all. I haven't had any major crutches, and I can park in a little tight fit space, you know? And I said, how long has it been since I've learned to drive? It's over 30 years now I've learned to drive. And I thought about the way that I learned to drive. I did not go to a school. As a matter of fact, when I did my driver's license, I did not have to do that test that you all have to do now. I just went in the car and I just started to learn to drive. And over a period of time, what? I am a driver. How did I learn to drive? I know I can drive because I know I can drive, right? But uh, the evidence is there. Uh, and how do I know I have learned to drive? It's because over the years I've been able to maneuver these streets. I've been able to do offensive driving, or is defensive driving? I, 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 it's all of the above. It's offensive and defensive with all the taxi drivers. It is offensive and defensive driving that we're doing. And I'm able to do it, why? Because of the way I learned to drive in the first place. I wasn't given a book, and I'm not knocking the books now, but I was placed in front of the car steering, steering wheel, and the man said to me, just drive. And other people, I know you have similar experience, but it's so important for us to talk about this, especially now where perceptions about TVET are so negative. It's almost as if there's a bastardization of TVET 
uh, for several reasons, which it's going to take me the entire day to get into, and I, uh, you know, but um, there, there has been that negative perception, and I felt that it was important for us to realize that the learning experienced in TVET is grounded in research. And many of the perceptions, most of, many of the people holding the perceptions about TVET really are those that are so grounded in academia that um, it's, so, it's difficult to change perceptions. And so today I'm starting a conversation about learning in practice and the model for uh, the professional development in instructors. I'm gonna be talking to you about some of the trans transmissive models of professional development that we have been using for years upon years upon years and not recognizing that they are not so effective. I'm gonna be talking to you about how we can position professional development within the, 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 th the theory of situated learning I'm going to share with you typologies, typologies of knowledge and let you understand how learning takes place for most of those. And then we're going to be talking about more transmissive means of professional development, which would be more effective for our TVET uh, instructors. Now, as we look at professional development, and I know all of you inside here, you have been to some form of professional development, you have participated in some form of professional development activities um, throughout your career, and I know that most of you will tell me that that normally takes place when you sit around a table and you have an expert to come into your institution and to tell you how you can fix the things that are there. Those are not really uh, effective ways all the time. Why? Because your, your, your expert coming in, they are familiar with theoretical uh, uh, views about the way things are happening in your institution, but it is you who really know what is happening in your institution. And so what we find with these transmissive mode where you sit and you absorb is that the learning is externally directed. You sit inside a room, you're looking at your watch and wondering what time you're going to be going. You realize that your knowledge is, is, is something that is acquired. Why? Because you're not, you're, you're not practicing anything that you are learning. You're realizing that the learning is mostly cognitive. You are listening and you're hearing, you're writing it down and all of those things. At the end of the day, you, you're leaving with knowledge. You have not necessarily learned. You're leaving with knowledge. And I'm sure that many of you who have gone through uh, academic um, institutions, if you think about it, you will probably say the same thing. I have left with knowledge. I went to the University of the West Indies. I did four years there for my bachelor's. What did I study? I study marine sciences. It's, it's odd that I'm where I am now after studying uh, marine sciences, but um, I studied aquaculture, Dr. Shim Hugh, aquaculture. I studied fisheries, Mr. Calvin Wees. Yes, and I left the university with knowledge. I did not learn in practice. I have left with knowledge. And so there's this practical component that is missing and that is why, as a trust, we're trying to change uh, the, 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 the dialogue, the narrative out there for us to see that uh, vocational um, education, vocational and technical education, I should have said that the other way around, it really should be a very, very huge component to the theoretical portion of it. And so even if you're looking at professional development programs, we must ensure that there is a very good combination of same. Now, when we compare the models of, of TVET, Mr. Saunders, you're doing very well, oh my God. When you compare the models of professional development, you will realize that the connected learner experience is much more effective because it's interactive, it's collaborative. Uh, you feel like you're not alone. It's practical, it's contextual, it's related to the work that you do, and you are the one who gets to pick the focus. Now, Professional development will not be effective if it is not continuous. It has to happen over a period of time. And so 
continuous professional development, Sir Sanders, if we are to look at a very good definition of it, Sir Sanders, you will note that it takes place over an extended period of time. It is based on this premise that the instructors, I'm talking the TVET instructors now, that they are learning through experience and so they are engaged in some activities that will increase their participation. And so we're seeing that learning takes place through engagement, not through the, acquire, the acquisition of knowledge, but through engagement, through participation. And participation in, 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 in spaces that will allow for learning to take place. This type of learning is the learning of practical, uh, of practicing professionals, and it happens during their careers. It's ongoing, it is contextual, it is cumulative. And so, if I look now at the social theory of learning, it is a theory, the situated theory was uh, posited by, it was postulated by Leib and Wenger in the early 80s, I believe, and basically this theory says that um, learning happens through increased participation increased participation of individuals in the practices of social uh, communities and it happens through the construction of identities that are characteristic of the same communities. Basically, if learning or, or, or uh, the change, the transformation of your identity takes place in the learning space as far as they are concerned. Now, if we were to look at a diagrammatic representation of this particular theory, you will realize that there are three main aspects to this theory. Remember, I spoke about increased participation, but increased partic participation in a particular space. And it's a particular space that is called uh, communities of practice. In a community of practice, you have like-minded people with like-minded um, uh, uh, mindsets. Um, you have people who have the same interests, people who are practicing uh, the same kind of activity. In that community of practice, you are able to change your identity over a period of time. And let me make it practical for you. If it is that you have a, a dressmaker for instance, or an instructor who, who teaches fashion design, the best way to get them to increase their practice is to have them working among other fashion designers. Fashion designers, some of whom may be more uh, further along in their learning than the Stevet instructors. Some fashion designers who may have had um, some kind of an exposure in international spaces. And believe it or not, by just having them work, don't think about any book at this portion, just having them work and exchanging and interacting for hours per day, you have increased learning. You have meaningful learning. Learning that will reside for long periods of time. And then you find that this TVET instructor now, this instructor in um, uh, fashion design, will soon become to change their identity as they become or as they gain more expertise in that particular area. The second part of the, um, the theory speaks about legitimate peripheral participation. Now the word uh, legitimate speaks to the authenticity the authenticity of the whole activity that is happening there. So we're not in a, in, in a lab simulating some processes. We're in an actual workshop where you're, you're working on the cars. I'm shifting now to perhaps a TVET instructor who is working in automotive technology. And so working now with expert in, experts in the field legitimizes the development that is happening because it is happening in the context uh, of, of, of automotive engineering. Now, the word peripheral is suggesting a movement, a movement uh, along a continuum that is saying that they're starting perhaps at the stage of, of, of a novice, 
but they move along the continuum to ensure that at the end of the continued engagement, they are moving from novice to probably intermediate to probably proficient until at some time, at some point, they become an expert. And so this legitimate par uh, peripheral participation is about moving from the periphery of the community of practice towards full participation. And that is when you know that the learning has taken place. So that is the theory. Just a brief overview of the theory. Let us now quickly situate um, TVET instruction within that theory, as I've been trying to do as I went through that. So this one is what I spoke about, the moving from the novice stage until they become experts and masters. And all of that takes place in communities of practice. So this further uh, explains um, what I told you before, the novice. Initially, it's peripheral engagement to the point where it is full engagement. They move on. It's the extended engagement, which is why continuous professional development is key. It's not a one, you know, I used to call it flyby. Sometimes you have these flyby professional developments, you know, just one off and so on. We have to see professional development, particularly for TVET instructors. And of course, this can be applied to all learning. Um, all instructors, but we have to see the importance in this case. So they continue to develop and acquire more sophisticated ways of doing these things, and so they become expert in, uh, instructors at that point. Professional learning, which is very much key to professional development, means that we are trying to take the instructors from a point of being on the periphery to the point where they become fully, fully engaged and immersed in the field. And they do that through engagement, through immersion, through engagement, and through interaction. We, we, we are talking now about learning in these communities of practice. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to just jump straight into what it is that Hart is doing in order to, to, to show the alignment with this theory. And um, I'm probably just going to wrap up with talking about some of the things that you can do in your institutions in order to ensure that professional learning is effective and it's going to really play out in the classroom in the long run. And so at heart, as far as the instructors are concerned, the instructors are embedded in industry. We take them on uh, work integrated learning experiences and they, they need to do several hours of that uh, every summer or every year. And, and, and that is monitored by HR and, of course, by the, um, the, the, the division of training and programs as well. And this is so important, too, because the very same way the instructors are learning is the way that we want uh, the trainees to learn as well. We want them to have that industry experience. We want them to be working with their hands, to be immersed in practice and so on, because that is the very, very best way of learning within that context. And so as we look ahead to, um, to the future, my recommendation would be that we do more of these, not only for the TVET instructors, but also for instructors everywhere. Consider having them learn in practice. As a matter of fact, we're moving ahead now with, with, with designing a, a, a training program for new instructors, which will have them embedded not only in the pedagogy, um, portion or pedagogy component of instruction, but also fully immersed in, in industry as a means of, of, of upskilling them, of a means of ensuring that they understand what is happening, the new trends that are happening in their different fields and so on. And we're moving ahead full force with this. And it's not that it has not been happening, but we're trying to put some structure 
to it, and in addition to that, we're wanting to pin it with this theory. I think many times the things that you do, it gets credence or, or it adds credence when you're able to ground it in theory. And this theory, I believe, should be considered by, by, by the, the, the Ministry of Education as well as they get their teachers involved. I know that there are so many of the different professions that we know that considers this because the, the nursing profession, the medical profession, this is really the theory that is used to embed their training. Um, you, um, you, you put them in the context, you put them in the space so that they can learn there. And yes, they're gonna make mistakes, but then it's a journey. It's a journey from the periphery, from peripheral participation to full participation. And what does that journey entail? That journey entails uh, interaction and engagement. Not talking to people, but to have people talking among themselves. Communities of practice, I want to say, uh, should be something, and I'm not going to say it's, it's the wave of the future, because I know that these communities already exist. So I know in the education field, we have uh, PLCs, or professional learning communities. But we want to ensure that they're working, and that they're working effectively because this, colleagues, is, is, is perhaps the most effective means of upskilling, um, developing your, your instructors professionally. It's the best way for you and I to learn anything at all. So the next time you think about learning something and you take up that book, just remember what I said to you today. I studied my Spanish from several books, and I went to Panama, and I couldn't have a good conversation with the waiter. I had to be taking the water and saying, agua, still, still. I find that I need to move from that space of novice in many of the things that I do and move and advance along the continuum to full participation. We should ensure that in instructors take ownership of their development, let them see that it's a practice, it's a, it's a part of the culture, so that it's not something that you force them to do. So many times we're telling pe people do professional development because they need to do it or because they know that they're gonna get a little increment, additional money, and they go and they get the hours in. We have to ensure that they see it as part of the culture so that they can actively go and seek out those opportunities. Uh, industry embedded work, in, uh, um, work integrated learning, um, that should be considered as well. It will enhance um, instructors' design of their own instruction. Um, and, and, and finally, their professional development experiences, um, their practice must be designed to reflect this. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening, and I await your questions. Thank you.